usually don't pay a whole lot of attention to what's going on in celebrity news, but what really slapped me in the face the past couple of days has been what's been going on with Keisha Knight Pulliam. And again, this is the first time that I've ever commented on a celebrity. I obviously, I don't know them. <laughs> it's just, oh, it's just another black eye on the black community. It's another example and it really highlights the dysfunction between black men and black women. Uh, situations where the, the, the woman is worth more than the man and how that may be a problem. <laughs> um, just, ugh. it's just horrible. It's horrible. It just, there's no other way to describe it. It's horrible. My heart goes out to her. You know, she has been, you know, one of the few child stars that's really stayed out of trouble and has really just been a wonderful example for other, you know, black youth, whether it be male or female. But I know she graduated from college. She has just maintained a really high level of respect and decorum and just a really good role model. She's a good role model. And it really pains me to see how but I guess this is a good opportunity to really kind of talk about it. Talk about the dysfunction between black men and black women. About how, you know, people are kind of criticizing her, saying, oh, you know, it's, it's her fault because she rushed into it and now she's got this baby coming. And, you know, first of all, even if he suspected that she, that he was, that, uh, she was cheating, if nothing else, if you don't think that this is your child, at least, you know, be, be, have some decorum have some feelings about this child. Whether you think it's yours or not, this baby is precious. This baby is still alive inside of her. And I don't know if this is some type of not so veiled attempt for her to miscarry because she's still in the very vulnerable, she's still in the second trimester. Um, but it's very clear that he is not interested in being a parent again. Um, I looked at his interview that he had and you know, he, did, he kind of skirted around whether, you know, he was asked directly, do you think Keisha really treat, cheated on you? And he said, oh, well, you know, she just wanted to, which is a big hurry to have a baby. She just wanted to have a baby. And that's all that, you know, he, he was pretty much insinuating that's all that she cared about was that she just wanted to have this baby. She didn't really care about him. And, you know, Keisha is in her late 30s. And, you know, I, I'm not so much a big thing about the biological clock thing, but, you know, this is, as I understand, this is her first baby. And if, she, you know, if she were of any other people group, it would say, well, of course she wants to have a baby. It's normal and natural. She got married <laughs> and now she wants to have a baby. Oh, oh, and how, how, how pathological of her. <laughs> She's just crazy to want to get married and have a baby. But if she was in if any other people group, they would say that's normal and natural. But black women are always seen to always want to trap someone, always wanting to, um, there's always some type of hidden agenda for black women. And no, it's not, it's not just, you know, I just want to be a mom. I want to experience motherhood. I want to be a parent. I always want to be a parent. I want to be responsible for a little person growing up to be a responsible citizen, citizen and living out the God's plans and purposes for their life. No, it's always, there's always some level of suspicion. And I'm so sick of it. And it's so pervasive in the black community. And the crazy part is, as I understand it, she's worth a heck of a lot more money than he is, you know, from reports, you know, and that's, ugh. So what, what's, what's her financial motive there? What is it? You know, nothing about this, what, about what he's saying makes sense. You know, something stinks in suburbia and it's not the milk, okay? <laughs> so, you know, this whole thing about, you know, we rushed into it, you know, there's no thought pattern on his part, you know, let's try counseling. You don't, you don't hear anything about counseling, nothing about, you know, let's try to work it out. It's, it's escape hatch. And another thing that kind of bothered me that I read, I don't know if this is true, if he said this or not, but he said that he, she wasn't as submissive as he thought. Now, they've only been married, what, seven months? Um, I think they only dated four months before that. But obviously, they don't know each other. But, you know, they made this commitment. And... You know, why can't that be something, why does that have to be a deal breaker? And that really kind of leads me to think, okay, how much of this is, involves money? You know, how much of this involved that he thought he might have? I mean, I, I'm assuming she has some type of trust fund, even though she's over 18. A lot of times these child stars, they have trust funds that distribute at different age levels, not necessarily just all at 18. 
And so, you know, I kind of had an idea about that because I'm a lawyer. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's how much of that is, how much did he honestly think going into this that he would have access to her money? So when you talk about being submissive, that kind of rings in my head. The second thing is, you know, this whole thing about um, him being upset about, you know, becoming a parent again, essentially. <laughs> you know, that, that was really just something that smacked in the in interview that I saw him actually do. Um, I, there's this something that really speaks to the whole stereotype of black men, if they, if they didn't grow up with dads, okay, you know, okay. But them not having any interest in learning how to become a good parent, that bothers me because, you know, that's something you can learn. <laughs> you know, this is not something that say, you know, you just open up your brain and pour in and if you don't get it, you know, too bad, you know, you're out of luck. No, that's something that you can work on, something you can learn, something you can definitely do. And it's quite obviously that he's not interested. What really bothers me about this too is, you know, again, he just has no appreciation for the life that's inside of her, whether he thinks it's his or not. And, and again, I, I don't have any, you know, he kind of skirted around that, that whole question. And, and my thing is, he knows the paternity test is going to come back and say it's his, you know. And, and not only that, but think about this poor little girl as she, you know, grows up later on. She's going to see these interviews. She's going to see it. And, you know, how's she going to feel about her dad? You know, that's just so sad to me. That's so sad. And then, too, you know, people are really criticizing her, but look at successful black women and the pool of men that they honestly think that they, you know, are limited to, you know, as far as, as, as men to marry. And that really just highlights that whole issue, that whole problem about, you know, uh, education level disparity and, and income level disparity and net worth level disparity. Uh, disparity between black men and black women and how that really tears apart the dynamics of you know dating uh, between black men and black women and marriage between black men and black women if you look at the rates the way of black women who are um, being educated and higher than uh, college level you know whether it's masters or doctoral level you know, it there's far outpaced. I think it's it's almost two to one of black women who have advanced degrees beyond college, and it's difficult. You know, if 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 you think that you're limited to just black men, if you're a black woman, and to be honest, that was something that I had to to shift my brain. I had to have a shift if the paradigm of the, the way that I thought about that to say that I'm not limited to just dating and marrying a black man. You know, I was married for a long time. I was married for 19 years. And I met my ex when I was 17. And I got divorced two years ago. So you think about it, my whole entire adult life I spent with this man. And so, you know, I didn't have very much dating experience before, you know, I was 17 when I met him. I was, you know, let me just, let me just go there. I was still a virgin, <laughs> you know. So up until, you know, two years ago, he was the only man I was ever with. And so... I'm not saying that to, 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 you know, shake the pom-poms and say, celebrate me. I'm just simply saying I had to have a shift in my mindset because, you know, I was married for so long, I hadn't been thinking about that. And so when I started, you know, to really get into the dating scene, which I ain't having fun yet. <laughs> just letting you know, I ain't having fun yet. But it's, it's, it's that whole shift of, prof of, of black women with a professional, you know, whether they consider themselves to be professional or not. I mean, I don't care if, you know, you're a wonderful um, person who is part of the gen janitorial staff somewhere and you're a black woman, you know, all the way up to, you know, the CEO of whatever company, there's still this um, disconnect between black men and black women. And, you know, that stems from childhood, you know, that there's things that can be said on both sides about why there's distrust, why black women distrust black men and vice versa. You know, I, I personally think a lot of it for black women is being violated, at a, sexually violated at a very young age. I, could, I had to struggle to think of a friend that I growing up with that didn't tell me that she wasn't violated sexually by 
someone who was close to her. A lot of times it was either a step parent or a mother's boyfriend um, or someone, you know, obviously someone who has to have access to you as a child, you know, and so it wasn't, you know, it wasn't the white guy down the street. It was, a, you know, the black man that looks like us, you know, and so that, you know, starts to breed and, and it plants a seed of distrust in us, you know, open season on little black girls. Um, and then, you know, for black men, a lot of times that happens later on where, you know, black women are so traumatized, you know, they, they don't get he inner healing from it. And then they bring all of that baggage to a marriage relationship. And sometimes that um, plays a dynamic and, you know, there might be, you know, a really nice black man that she's married to. And, you know, she, he ends up being traumatized in the marriage because of it. And then there's distrust on that side. But whatever the reason is, it is a vicious cycle. There's got to, you know, there, God's the answer because goodness knows we're not coming up with it in our own natural minds, in our own understanding, and in our own efforts. You know, this is a church issue. This is a God issue because he's the only one who has the answer. Because I tell you, you know, thinking about this stuff, this this sends me into orbit. You know, this makes my, my, my head hurt, you know. <laughs> and But there's got to be something. There's got to be something. There is an answer, and I'm telling you, only God has the answer. So I just, I lift both of them up in prayer, Keisha and her husband, Ed. I lift them both up in prayer. I, I, I pray that, you know, all this ugliness that's going on and, you know, back and forth, not so much her. She's, I really feel like taking the high road. It's really him that's uh, just being mean-spirited and hateful towards her and it's quite an, a, a very obvious attempt to disgrace her publicly I mean I don't know what she could have done you know to really deserve that because that's what it is it is, is really a blatant attempt to disgrace her publicly but when she's had such a stellar reputation her whole life unlike many other child stars unfortunately and so it's unfortunately the, the very person who's doing this to her is her husband how how much more or deeper the betrayal is must feel for her you know this is someone that i trust it's someone who you know i'm i'm pregnant and he's doing this not only that but the timing is also peculiar too because you know this is the time where it's almost uh camp for for uh, football you know professional football is about to start to open up the camps I don't know what's going on. I don't know what he's trying to leverage this for some type of publicity or whatever business interest that he has going on. I don't think that he's really interested in maybe playing anymore professionally, but I don't know. Maybe he's trying to get into some type of, you know, NFL organization. I have no idea what he's trying, but the timing on this to me is very, very suspicious. Again, I don't know these folks, but oh, I just lift him up. Lord, I just, I just pray a blessing over them, Lord. Um, this is just, this is not funny. This is not just something for us to sit and watch popcorn and see, ooh, let's see what else they say. It's, it's horrible. I, I pray, especially for this little girl that's growing inside of her, that she does not have any lasting emotional hurt from some of the things her dad is saying. And I pray that, that all parties involved, I pray for him too. I don't think he's a devil's disciple. I don't. I I think that he's very misguided. I think that he's very angry. I think that he needs counseling. And I'm sure after this, she can probably use some too. Um, I'm a big proponent of counseling. I have been to very wonderful Christian counselors that have helped me beyond I, words that I could, I could think of to, to express it in the English language. They have been so helpful to me. So I'm not saying, oh, they should go to counseling. I'm a bit, let me push everybody else out of the way, raise my hand and say, I love counseling. <laughs> um, and so, I just pray for them that they, they get the help that they that they need. I pray this baby is, is growing healthy and happy because all the bad chemicals and hormones that the body gives off when they're, they're under stress is not good when you're pregnant. You know, I, I, you know I'm not a parent. I'm just not. Um, so I can't say, oh, I know how she feels because I, you know, physically I don't, I don't know. I can only imagine in my mind. But I just pray for them. I pray. But I hope this starts to build a healthier... Um, uh, healthier dialogue in the black community about look what's going on with us between black men and black women and so I just leave you with that in prayer for them and oh Lord help us
Good night.